Yes, that's a fundamental issue today because uh, people don't really know how to tackle the problem. Uh, first of all, you need to establish the fact that there is in the car industry a very specific split on security. There is safety on one side, which is about uh, the reliability of the car in, from a security perspective, which is pretty much covered, calculations are okay, that works. And there is the cyber security, which is another world. And this one is actually uh, quite under risk when you see all the white hat, hat people who actually have managed to hack a number of cars in a number of ways. Uh, and the problem here is not that we cannot secure it, the problem is, is the economic cost. Yes, so if you actually would take a step back uh, and consider the old chain from the sensor, the SOC, the gateway in the car, and then outside of the car, the communication with uh, the gateways in the service providers, you see that it's a full end-to-end -end solution that you need to provide. And so here, we as Symantec uh, have uh, the lucky position to have all the assets to do from certificate-based to uh, host IPS solutions, to gateway solutions, and of course, to have proxy solutions on the network. Indeed, uh, based on our approach with, uh, for example, a, Nord um, a Nordic car maker, uh, we succeeded to have since three years a protection for over the air with Ericsson uh, to cover a big fleet of cars. I think it's growing like uh, 50,000 cars per month at, at this stage. And we could see indeed that we are protecting malware and reputation-based uh, uh, systems going to botnet command and controls. And, uh, Yes, uh, today we are at the beginning of the journey and to be honest, uh, we, we could share best practices, but again, if you take a step back, the problem will be cost. Anything which is beyond the gateway in the car, the sensor and the SOC, the industry is not really ready to pay, right? Because they will need to translate the cost to the customer and the customer will not be, not, not be ready to pay. So you have the problem that you need to, to say where you stop with security. And when you stop with security, the next question will be the liability. And of course, this goes to the insurance guys. And so we as Symantec uh, have proposed two big pillars here. One is to consider a unified security approach to glue and, and unify all the zones from the sensors, the SOC, the gateway and uh, over the air. That's one piece. But the other way we can leverage this uh, massive, and I think it's today the largest civilian data analytics for security in the world, I think there is only one army which has more than us. Uh, we have recently worked with insurance companies and hired around 20 insurers to actually extract data from our data lakes so that they can start to calculate the risk and propose solutions to this type of, of market. Yes, great question. Uh, yes, of course, uh, interoperability is about, uh, and standards are about making sure that you can have all of these um, new markets to, uh, it's like a field of flowers and you want them to blossom, right? The problem is we don't want to have an allergy as well, right? So um, here, the thing is that we, we consider that there are a number of standards that we participate here from IETA, from ITU, from uh, a number of other parties because the ecosystem is very large. Consider Ericsson, they are part of the digital service provider ecosystem. So we need this part of the industry to uh, make standards there. But consider, I work with a company called IoT.bzh, uh, a very good company, startup, French company, and they, they, they are strong on AGL at the moment. I think AGL is a good standard that, uh, that already the car makers are following. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I would not know because interestingly enough, you have a number of interactions here. How the vehicle interacts with the home, how it interacts with the city and therefore all the smart city problem, but the hardest of all of them is how vehicles interact with other vehicles. And this is going to be a big challenge in terms of decision making because there may be situations where you, you would actually sacrifice someone in terms of accidents if you would let the car be autonomous. So, this is, to be honest, not resolved. And until this is resolved, I really don't see how we are going to have a full-fledged autonomous car in the streets.